I think it's recording. Is it recording? Can you just see? Yes. Something up here. You're on there. Okay. My name is Monica Bhatia, and um, I'm the founder of San Diego College of Ayurveda. And we're doing a course on Ayurveda and women's support. And uh, it's women's support. And we'll discuss the cycles of women, starting from when we hit puberty, then our monthly cycle, and then the cycle we go through when we have a child. And then, of course, the whole 18, 19 years till the children grow up. And then, of course, there's the perimenopausal cycle, which people say it takes about six or seven years before the menopause hits. And then you have the actual menopause and then you, the post-menopause years. Um, according to Ayurveda, all of this, you know, hitting puberty, then your monthly cycle, then the postpartum, and it's all geared towards one very basic things, which is we were meant to be creators as women. We were meant to be creators and nurture. So the nature has given us periods and menstruation so we can have a child. And then when our body is not ready to have a child anymore, it's not strong enough, then we have menopause. So it's just a cycle, it's not a disease. I, I always say that, it's not a disease. And there's a lot of alternative therapies. I'm going to go back to menopause for a, for a few seconds. So it says you're perimenopausal six or seven years, but it's different for every woman. You know, some women can have 10 years also. Some are just three years, some are just, just like that two years. So everybody is different, right? So I gave you this form. I'll just go through the things that we discussed because they not only relate to a woman <clears throat> during perimenopause, menopause, postmenopause, but also to whenever postpartum. So I'm going to start with vata. In fact, you were doing vata before. Vata resides in the colon. And there are five subtypes of vata. Vata is a very vibrating movement energy. So when you think of vata, think movement. Which is why there's a lot of, vatas are very good. They can be um, athlete, athletes. They're very creative in their mind as well because the mind can move. It's a moving energy movement. So there's some symptoms that I'll just go through which are very common when vata is out of imbalance in a woman and this will usually manifest when a woman's undergoing her cycle, right? Uh, this could be dryness and this dryness could be dry hair, right? It could be dry skin. So if you have dry hair, dry skin, that is a vata imbalance. And usually pitta and kapha get imbalanced by vata. That's a thumb rule because Kapha is earth. Earth cannot move by itself. It needs another force to push it. So usually, you know, you could be a pitta, but the root cause of your problem could be vata too. And it's very easily disturbed because it's a movable energy. In fact, vata is always vibrating in our body. So in Ayurveda, all kind of anxiety issues, if you look in, un, under the mental constitution, mostly all kind of anxiety issues except migraine headaches, uh, pretty much, even migraine headaches. So you have anxiety, mood, mood swings, then um, any kind of disorder related to the nervous system, uh, psychological disorders, they're related to vata. Can anyone tell me why? Why do you think? You know, anything of imbalance of the mind is usually a vata imbalance in Ayurveda. Why is that? Even uh, learning disorders in kids, autism, uh, learning disabilities, you know, anxiety, depression, all of this is related to vata. Why do you think that is? Because it's also uh, governs the nervous system. Yeah, because vata also resides in the brain. It's the movement. It's, it's a moving energy. And all the nervous disorders are what? It's movement of thoughts. It's movement of thoughts. Right? So obviously if there's a vata woman, she will have more anxiety and more worries and more depression in her cycle than anybody else compared to. So for a vata woman, if you are partly vata, if, you, if you're worrying about things without it, and you know you, it doesn't make sense to worry about it. That's a very vata thing. 
Yeah, my, my husband sometimes says airhead, but he doesn't mean airhead. <laughs> he means vata. Vata. So, because vata is characterized by dryness. So, think there's not enough lubrication. And then vata is characterized by lightness. So, vata women will be light. They won't gain weight easily. I'm talking about a pure vata woman. And so, dry hair, dry skin, even vaginal dryness. And uh, if vata resides in the colon, if there's not enough lubrication in the colon, what, do you, what happens? Constipation. Constipation. Lack of earth element. So all of these are automatically characterized when a woman is in her cycle, whether it's, whether it's a 16-year-old you know, girl, it's a 36-year-old woman, or it's a 66, uh, it's a 56 peri postmenopausal. These things are always, obviously, when we are hitting menopause, these things are much more pronounced because you're also entering another cycle of age as well. So there, it's much more pronounced. And of course, hot flashes are common, but all the hot flashes are not created equal. Let's talk about a pregnant woman. Pitta pregnancies, pitta means fire. Oh, these women are like incubators. They're just so hot. They're just exuding heat all the time. Become red, the skin becomes red. Or vata women, all the vata characteristics become, you know. During a pregnancy, what is expanding? Air. There's so much expansion. And earth, because the baby is the earth. So both of them become high. And once the, the baby's out, then the vata is still high. It's, there's still so much air. You know, so there's a whole cycle that goes on. In, in India, what, what we do in Ayurveda, a woman gets 40 days of body and mind treatment every single day. We don't even give water. We give, uh, we give herbs mixed in water so the vata in her body can completely go. Because if the vata remains in the system after childbirth, what, what is vata energy? The chances of postpartum depression and unhealthiness is very, very high. So... Oh, yes. So, and that can remain in the body for years to come, you know, if that is not taken care of. And usually, you know, in this country, a woman will have a child, and they, we don't even let a woman, like in India, we won't even let her go out, you know, because you, you're in this, you have to restore your energy mentally, physically, spiritually, restore your energy. So we massage her, we give her herbs, we give her nurturing and caring and love and then she starts exercising after 40 days or so and so on and so forth here the the women are out with the babies after two weeks you know so and and they can't help themselves and there's not 10 people helping them not out you know and even if grandparents are coming or they can't stay for long but that's how the culture is but all I'm saying is that there's a need for more nurturing and more support during that time because that time is very important. And then women who are vata should not have children one after the other, ever. Your kids are one after the other? One year and 11 months, almost two years. Before. Two years, but you're not a vata, you're no, pitta kapha. Kapha. pitta kapha. So you can handle it. <laughs> kapha women can handle it. Yes, <laughs> yes kapha women can just... Have babies. Just, we can have babies. We can throw them out. <laughs> okay. So, we're going, f also vata feels very cold. So, you know, vata is, you know, they're, they're tall, thin, and they're, you can actually, if you look at a vata woman's wrist, they're usually not big breasted unless they've had, you know, plastic surgery. I can usually tell a vata woman's had plastic surgery, because the entire body, the face, the dryness, and then you see very, very thin wrists and very thin, beautiful hands, beautiful, creative, like uh, hands of a pianist, but brittle nails sometimes. If they're imbalanced, if they're balanced, then it's not so brittle, of course. So also vata will feel very cold. So you'll always see, uh, you know, if a vata woman is married to a pitta man, big problem, because <laughs> the man is always hot, the woman's always cold. Another thing which is very associated with vata when vata is an imbalance is forgetfulness. You forget things. So it's, I can be a kapha. It doesn't matter who I am, but I can have a vata imbalance, you know, because of 
whatever reason, this could be exposure to a lot of wind, uh, jet lag, 24 hours of traveling or 30 hours, crying spells. So, you know, I, I like to use the word, I'm getting very hormonal, you know. So you, you have these crying spells. So everybody can have that, but um, because vata is movement, they can cry and laugh at the same time. Tension headache. So vata headaches are very, even vatas will have migraine, but their migraines are characterized by what? Coming and going. Vata headaches are usually at the back or on the top of their head or in the back of their head and they come and go. It, they're not, it, the headache is not so bad that they can't function. They can actually function even with a headache, but it comes and goes. Then you have joint or muscle ache. So the muscles ache, but they can't. They'll tell my, my, my waist aches, my thigh aches, ears are ringing, very, very vata during a vata cycle. And pretty much for a vata woman throughout her life, because there's lack of earth, there's lack of water, there's so much air, they, one month they get their periods, another month they don't. It's very, very, ir very irregular, right? Also, if a vata woman is in menopause, heart palpitations, fluctuating blood pressure, insomnia, it's, their insomnia is different because a vata woman, she has a hot flash, she gets up, and now she's cold. So Dr. Nancy from this book, The Ageless Woman, she likes to say, when you're not flashing, she uses that word, when you're not flashing, if you're cold, then it's a vata imbalance. Okay, let's move on to pitta. So we've been talking about air and movement. We've, because it's a more, you know, subtle element. It's a subtle energy and it can affect all of us whenever we are in, in that cycle. And another thing with Ayurveda, just because our periods have stopped consecutively for 12 months doesn't mean our body does not have a cycle. It still has a cycle. That's only a physical manifestation. There is a cycle that's still going on. If there is no cycle, the world cannot go on. Our body works on a cycle. When the sun is up, the body wakes up. When the sun is high, Agni is high, our digestive fire is high. When the sun is low, metabolism is low, Agni is low. And it's night time, body wants to go to sleep, mind wants to go to sleep. When it's winter time, body wants warmth. When it's summer time, it wants cool. We are, we are a creature of cycle. So really Ayurveda, when you, just because your periods have stopped consecutively for 12 months does not really mean you don't have a cycle. Your body can still produce hormones later. We'll talk about that in a minute. And I, Turn the camera off. So we're moving towards pitta. Pitta is what? Fire and? Fire and water. So pitta means heat. What kind of, how will the pitta hot flashes differ from vata hot flashes? Very hot. They're always hot. They will have hot flashes at night. And what if a pitta person eats chilies and, you know, cayenne pepper, curry? <laughs> Thai curry with a nine. What will happen then? Okay. Yes. Incubator. <laughs> very, very hot. Sauna. So when they're not flashing, they're still warm. And if you touch the, the skin temperature of a pitta is usually warmer. Like if you touch my extremities are always cold because I'm a kapha. Vata extremities are always cold. But pitta extremities and body temperature is always warm. But if they are perimenopausal, they're even warmer than normal. And alternate when they'll have bleeding, it's heavy, and they get migraine headaches. So pitta headaches are always around the temple. Not mostly around the temple, let's not say always. So uh, vata headaches are back, but they alternate, they come and go. Kapha headache, headache is all over, and especially around the sinus. Because kapha resides in ENT, ear, nose, throat. So it's especially around here, so it's a dull, dull ache. So they feel this heaviness and it's cloudy and you like this. Pitta is signified by, Pitta is heat. So how is heat going to manifest in the mind? Like we talked before, Vata women will feel very anxious. I'm getting old. I have wrinkles. 
you know they might feel that I'm, I'm you know I, I'm never going to be that desirable again you know and she will worry about it a pitta woman instead of worrying about it she will do something about it so pitta women will go and have surgery or you know change the wardrobe or you know I am not going to let the world tell me that I'm no one and you know they are the See, Vatas are the savers. They want to save the planet. They want to save everybody. So Vata women will go join somewhere and try and save somebody. And Pitta women will go and try and solve everybody's problems because they get angry about it and solve the problem. And Kapha women will eat and feed others and eat and feed and eat. <laughs> so um, are you Pitta or Kapha or? Well, you know, when I did it, I was actually three, three, and three. Really? It's yeah. possible you tried Oshie. You know, it's like, I, was, I go, well, I'm not that one. But not here, I'm not three, three, and three. Yeah, so but we I, can I'm also go. Kind of confused about it, yeah, <laughs> so before you leave, you'll do your, uh, okay. <laughs> you'll try and find out. Uh, now, Pitta energy is usually in the stomach. When the energy is high, they usually, they're a panavata which is in the, which that becomes very high. So they have several bowel movements in a day and it could be loose. They may also suffer from acidity or acid reflux and their hair, skin. I mean, imagine getting ac acne when you're perimenopausal. But it happens with Pitta sometimes. They may need to drink a lot of water. Let's talk about water. I told you that you know, water is very, very important. <coughs> So Vata women should take warm to hot water. Kapha women should take warm to hot water mixed with rose. Because rose naturally helps your inner balance. And Pitta women should have room temperature water. And why is that? Why are we not having? There's so much heat. But kapha don't feel that thirsty because they're made of the water element. So even if they have six cups of water a day, that's enough for them usually. Vata usually eight glasses is good. But that eight glasses should mostly be warm, either in the form of tea or soups. So on the top of your eight glasses, because I don't know, I don't remember. Is this my eighth class or seventh class or sixth? It's so hard. So a lot of people, they remain, they don't remain hydrated because unless you actually carry how many glasses. But Ayurveda believes according to your body type. So if you're a Pitta woman and there's a cycle going on, you need more water. Very simple. So if you're thirsty, drink water. Maybe more than eight cups a day. But if you cannot remember eight cups, include throughout the day drink you know, decaffeinated teas, herbal teas, lots of soups, dals, lentils, soup, broth in your food. So you're actually on a semi-liquid diet, really. So that will hydrate. Very, very important to do that. And kapha don't feel thirsty. You have to force them to drink water. So I always cheat because I will do anything not to drink water. So I will drink, you know, I will take chamomile tea, jasmine tea. So I will drink 15 cups of tea, but I think I've drunk tea, I haven't drunk water. So you have to fool your mind a little bit. Yeah, I'll take green tea, then I will make lots of dal, lots of, you know dal? Um, lentils. Oh, yeah. With lots of water. And, that gives me gas. yeah, vata. That's a vata. You, I would say you're a vata pitta, no? He'll tell you. So that's pretty much a pitta imbalance, right? <laughs> Let's move to kapha imbalance. Kapha imbalance is weight gain, fluid retention, breast swelling. Also, all of these symptoms, like I said, will be seen postpartum as well, once a woman's had a baby. And also, pitta women tend to have, if they're going to, going to be a chronic imbalance, they are probably might have cysts and fibroids or polycystic ovarian syndrome. And kapha will tend to have, you know, fibroids in the breasts. Very common for kapha women to have the cysts in the breasts. Um, 
Also, kapha women may, if they're imbalanced, they may suffer from lycoria, a lot of vaginal discharge, which is exactly the opposite of vata, where is, there is no vaginal discharge at all. This is why it's a women workshop, no men allowed <laughs> <laughs> talking about that. And really, the vaginal discharge is a good thing because it keeps everything lubricated and there's also bacteria down there. You know, so they're breaking a lot of, so there's bacteria all over. So if there is dryness, there's so much dryness, you want to give a person probiotics, you want to lubricate that person. But in kapha, if they have so much secretion happening, you know, ears, nose, they might get ENT infections too. And so immunity also go, takes a hit during the cycle time. So when I have my period, I call it I'm cleansing. I don't cook. But not because I'm Indian and in India we don't cook when we have a cycle. But just I, I just want to take a break. I sleep on the floor. I think this is my time when I'm letting go of a lot of, it's my cleansing time. I give myself a break. I like to do very simple yoga. And of course, a very, very good thing for Vata, Pitta and Kapha women is to do uh, yoga asanas that are perfect for their dosha. And all yoga is not created equal. We've got two yoga teachers here. so. You know, it's not, not created equal. Pitta woman, if she is perimenopausal, the hot yoga is not so good. <laughs> cooling yoga is good. And cooling yoga would be what? I would do like, like some very, like smooth asanas. Very like smooth, a... smooth, you know, that bring balance and bring you back and ground you. But they should be done ideally in the evening time for Pitta, because you're trying to cool that person. What for yin yoga? I was going to say that. I think yin, like yoga yin yoga is good for Pitta. Yin yoga? What do you do in yin yoga? It's the same poses, but you hold it for a longer Yes, that would so be good. Would be yeah, that would be great. But the hot yoga would not be good for Pitta too much. For Vata, hot yoga would be fantastic. But they should be drinking water as well. Uh, but also because vata have that light energy, um, you know, they, they're very sensitive to energy, so they might even feel lightheaded after. So they should not continue for 90 minutes, the hot, maybe 45 minutes. Best time for vata to do the yoga is to do grounding exercises in the morning. And then they can do their regular whatever workout later. But in the morning, then all day they'll be balanced. For kapha, best time is the afternoon because that's when the sun is at the highest and their their bmr is low their agni is low it gets them going and you will you know when people come to me and i ask them what time do you have the hot flash pitta women will sometimes experience more hot hot flashes during the day when the sun is high and kapha may not experience hot flashes when the sun is high only at night or when it's cold so when you the Moral of the story is, if you're in balance, it's easy to use alternative approaches that will help you, right? 